Hello everyone! As you may know, in my last video testing the K-Silver Hall Effect sticks on my Joy-Cons, I broke my flat cable for the SL and SR buttons. And it wasn't my fault. These cables are extremely fragile. They might break by simply opening the Joy-Con once. So I was looking for replacements online and I found out that Extreme Rate sells custom flat cables with different colors for the LEDs. And by looking at the color options, they have colors that match each one of my Joy-Cons. And that is a simple mod that I find very interesting, because all Joy-Cons have green LEDs, no matter what color they are. Wouldn't it be awesome if the LED color matched the color of the Joy-Con? I mean, just look at it. The green matches the green color, but the pink one is green, so it doesn't make sense. So I got the kits from Extreme Rate, and you won't just receive the LEDs, you receive a complete package, with all the tools you need to open the Joy-Con, and even some replacement screws in case you lose them. And I really like the screwdriver that came with the kit. It's entirely made of metal, and you can change the tip too. It comes with two tips, one tri-wing and one Phillips, and you can store the Phillips tip inside the screwdriver. It's super convenient and easy to store. With the kit you also get a manual that directs you to Extreme Rate Guide website. They have a detailed tutorial on how to install these parts. All the parts come in an anti-static bag, and you receive two flat cables, one for each Joy-Con, and an extra LED for the Switch dock. I want to see how different the Extreme Rate LEDs are from the originals, so I'll start with the green one. Grab your screwdriver and apply the brown tri-wing tip that comes with the kit. Then start by removing these four screws on the back of the Joy-Con. With the screws removed, Grab the yellow prying tool and pry open the Joy-Con like this. This Joy-Con was never opened before, and you can see that the flat cable already comes folded like this from the factory. This is very bad for a thin flat cable like this. No wonder how they break so easily. Moving on, you'll want to remove the battery. Just grab the battery by the two wires and pull them. It will easily snap out. Next, remove the antenna and insert the prying tool on this hole and pry out the battery. With the battery out, you can grab a Phillips screwdriver. You can use this black screwdriver or the silver tip that comes with the kit. And you want to remove these screws here. With the screws out, you want to carefully flip over this middle piece. The ZR cable is very short and you can break them if you're not careful. This is the best way to deal with this cable. If you disconnect it, it's gonna be very hard to put it back into place. So just hold the middle piece close to the shell and unlatch the flat cable for the SL and SR buttons. Now you can finally remove it with a Phillips screwdriver. Then grab the respective cable from the extreme rate. It should have a mark showing if it's the right or left cable. Put it in place and reinsert the screws.
test the buttons to see if they are aligned. And now you can reattach the flag cable and close the shell. Pay attention on the slot for the antenna here. When connecting the battery, you should not use a screwdriver to plug in the connector. Use a toothpick or the plastic tool that comes with the kit. And with the battery plugged in, we can already see the LEDs. And wow, they are bright! Much brighter than the original LEDs. In fact, they are so bright, there is some light bleed on the shell. This can be annoying for some people, but there is a workaround. Just use some electrical tape to block the sides of the LEDs. And to finish, you don't want to fold the flat cable like Nintendo did. Instead, you want to bend it a little bit and insert it on this hole. This way, the cable will be more protected when you close the shell. And here it is, without any light blade. Let's move to the left pink Joy-Con. And you can see that this one had the cable folded over the battery too. On the left Joy-Con, the screws are in a different place. And here, the flat cable for the ZL button is much longer.
And here's the pink LEDs. And you can do the same thing on the left Joy-Con, as the hole is in the same place here. Just perfect. Now moving to the dock, the LED is a bit harder to install. You want to remove the back lid of the dock. Then unscrew all of the screws here. Remove the tabs that hold the dock board. Then disconnect the main board from the dock. To get to the LEDs, we'll have to remove even more screws. Turns out that there are 8 more screws hidden on these holes. 4 here, and 4 here. With those screws removed, all you have to do is lift this part. Remove the original LED, and repeat the steps in reverse to reassemble the dock. And here's the final result. What did you think? Personally, I think this mod looks fantastic. It's a simple detail that makes the Joy-Con look so much better. The colors perfectly match the Joy-Con shells, and now you have working SL and SR buttons again. I put the yellow LED on the dock to match the Joy-Con, and it also looks great. And now, if you attach your Joy-Cons to the grip, the LEDs will also match the color. Overall, the LED kits from Extreme Rate is very easy to install. With no soldering required, all you have to do is open the Joy-Con and replace the part. There are multiple colors available, and the LEDs are stronger than the original part. The only con that I can see is that the light bleed through the Joy-Con shell can be annoying to some folks out there. And I just wish that Extreme Rate would allow you to select different colors for each of the LEDs. The kits are sold in pairs, and the Switch rarely have matching color Joy-Cons, so you might need to buy two kits to have matching colors for each Joy-Con. And that's it for today. Subscribe or leave a comment and a like to help me out with the algorithm, and as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.